Welcome, I'm the Kaiju no Kami here with Advent Nebula. And we are at Color Out Anime Fest 2019 interviewing. Hi, I'm Jade Saxton. Welcome, are you having a good time? I'm having a great time, I love Colorado. So you were here for the Dragon Boat Festival last year. Did you have fun doing that? I loved it, it was so neat, it was really cool, and I hadn't been to Colorado in the summer, and only been in the winter, which was not the same experience. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it was really neat uh, to kind of see that whole festival, and to just kind of like do a little mini thing, and it was all outside, I was like wearing all my best Coachella outfits, you know. I know, it was really fun, it was really cool, I liked it a lot, yeah. And for you, you get to reprise your role again in Index for its final season. How's that been for you? Um, it's been five minutes of my life because she's only showed up once. <laughs> so that's all I can say about that is thanks a lot, season whatever. <laughs> Where's Komoe? Bring her back. So on that note, for people who might not know who you are, what have you done? What have I done? Like, oh, like, like my roles. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, um, when I was fuller, um, no, um, uh, well, I, I think I'm most known for Carla in Fairy Tale. She's one of my really popular characters, along with Senna Kashiwazaki from Haganai. I don't have many friends. Um, I also am known for Hachin and Michiko and Hachin, and, oh my gosh, I always get bad at these lists. Ferris and Steingate. Ferris and Steinsgate, Akatsuki and Log Horizon. Um, let's see, Har, uh, Harana and Is This a Zombie, um, y'all, Akana, <laughs> Akana and Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, Konako and High School DxD, and many more. <laughs> and being that there's a new Fruits Basket series, what's it like getting to be in something that is having a brand new adaptation that was beloved before from its old version? Um, it's really freaking cool, y'all. I was so excited when I found out because you know, they brought back, like, most of the original cast, so, like, you know, I had no clue that I would get to kind of play one of these really kind of cool, iconic roles um, that from a show that's about, like, 20 years old now, um, and was one of the first anime that I'd ever heard about, so I was really excited <laughs> to kind of join that cast and to get to do someone so cool and who does all, like, the witchy waves and stuff. I really relate to her. I play uh, Hanajima, by the way, Saki Hanajima, um, so I love it. And for you, as well as being an actor, you're an ADR director as well. Most recently, you worked on My Roommate as a Cat. How did you enjoy working on that show? Well, I didn't direct that one. Jeremy Inman directed that one um, when you're talking about ADR direction. But I played Haru the cat. And I don't know if anyone like saw my social media about that. But I mean, I was just like, y'all, y'all, I get to play a real cat. I know I played like cat like people, but it was like a real cat. It was like, I was just like, I peaked. Where do I go from here? I love it so much. So what type of challenges do you face that are different as an ADR director compared to just voice acting? I mean, voice acting, you show up, you do your one job, your one role, your one thing. When you're the ADR director, you're there like for the whole shebang, like, you know, gu guiding the ship through everything from, uh, you know, all the preseason stuff, getting everything ready, through casting, through every bit of the episode preparedness, all the way to the end through mix till it's ready for like DVD and broadcasting out of the world. So it's like a lot, your hands are in a lot more places. It's a lot, um, a lot different. Is it a challenge as well when you have to deal with a show that's got a simul dub but going on at the same time? Well, at Funimation, the way that things operate now, almost every single thing we do is a simul dub. And if you're a full time ADR director like myself, um, we do two simul dubs uh, per season. So every three months we have two new shows that we're doing. So um, it's challenging, but it's kind of all I've ever known as an ADR director because when I was brought on about two and a half years ago, we were already in the thick of simul dubbing uh, or broadcast dubs, and um, that's just kind of how I was trained and how I learned it. So it's just what I know. Now, being that I'm also a teacher, I have students that are always like, oh, I love watching these things. I want to be an actor or a voice actor. I want to be a singer. And then sometimes I'm like, well, I don't know if I want to do that because I might fail at it or I might be bullied. Do you have any advice for people like that? On failing and bullying? Mm -hmm. uh, well, failing, um, if you want to be an actor, if you want to be a performer of any kind, failing and failure is part of it. I think it's kind of part of life and anything and any kind of craft or a thing you're trying to learn or get better at and do, you're going to have failure. And as an actor, you're going to have rejection. Like. Even when you're an established actor who's getting a lot of roles and who's done a lot of things, like myself and a lot of the guests here, like you're still going to be rejected like all the time. That's just the nature of the business. Um, so I would just say, you know, 
it's just part of it and kind of accept it and like, you know, you learn to deal with it as you go along. Um, I don't know that I have any really good advice because it's been hard for me sometimes, but uh, you know, I think just kind of keep in your mind's eye that like this isn't the last thing that will be around. This isn't the last show, this isn't the last opportunity. There's always going to be more, there's always going to be the next one. And keep showing up and keep showing your face because um, because I'm someone now who does casting, you can audition for me like three months ago for something and maybe I, you know, you weren't right for what I was trying to create for that project, but I remember you and I bring you back in later. So like make sure when you show up for every audition or for, for anything like that as an artist that, you know, don't, don't discount like what you're doing in that room or in that moment as a failure um, necessarily because it could matter later on and you could make that connection for something later on. Yeah. yeah. So for somebody that's deciding they want to get into doing something like script writing or ADR directing, what advice would you give to them? Oh gosh, um, I don't know on the script writing end of things because I've never done that. But I think if you're in the the niche business of like specific to anime, uh, you know, kind of working in the industry in general and like in any way that you can is going to make that happen. Like I was voice acting for 10 years before I started directing and kind of had the courage. For me, it was just like building the courage to ask, hey, can I try this? Can I do this? And then getting the opportunity to kind of proceed with that. But like I already had that base knowledge of all of the projects that I worked on as an actor and all of the relationships that I built with other directors and producers and actors in the business to kind of give me that groundwork and that foundation to go forward and you know, succeed in that and at least, you know, <laughs> kind of have a foothold and a little starting point in that. Um, you know, there are classes and there are things like that and all of that, but specific to ADR directing, it's a really niche biz. So I really, I don't have a good answer for that, y'all, but that's how I got into it. <laughs> yeah. Well, everybody has to start somewhere. Yeah, so. true, true, true. Yeah, and I think... I mean, every ADR, RD actor, every ADR director and every actor has a different story of how they got into voice acting or into ADR directing. Like, it was different for everybody. Was it a career you wanted to pursue right from the beginning, or did you just kind of fall into that? No, I used to, when people were like, would ask me, would you ever consider directing? My answer was like, ah, uh, I don't know. I just never felt ready, and, and then one day, uh, I was just kind of like, you know what, uh, maybe I'm not as you know, you're never like really ready, but I was ready to at least have like that 20 seconds of courage to ask the question <laughs> and then go from there. Um, you know, because I was like, it doesn't hurt to ask, it doesn't hurt to try, it doesn't hurt to like put yourself out there at least and say, hey, I'm interested. And then I got, I got the shot. Like I had no idea that I thought I was just going to get to come in and like kind of sub direct and like shadow and learn how to do it and like all of that. And they were like, um, can you start in three weeks with your own show? And I was like, Yes, you know, like that second of pause of like, holy crap, but then yes, I and mean, I just dove in knowing that I had the support of um, everyone around me, you know, if I, you know, was drowning that they were going to help me out. <laughs> yeah. I want to like. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, is there a role that, or a day that you were working that had such a, such a positive impact that you remember it forever? No, that's so hard. Or something that was just really fun that stuck out to you? I mean, I, I have fun memories of like certain casts and like shows and like, you know, getting to have had that experience and like have that um, that journey with everyone. Uh, I can't think of like an exact day necessarily. <laughs> um, sometimes the endings of things are, are where it like kind of hits you most in the heart. Um, wrapping up something and you're like oh gosh this really hurts because I don't want it to end and you're gonna miss those characters you're gonna miss working with those people um, and getting to play that or direct it or whatever so those the endings are always kind of the hardest and um, are, are a little bit more memorable <laughs> yeah speaking of endings fairy tales coming to the end how are your feelings with that coming soon it's you know it's bittersweet it's been going on for so long um, so it's it's kind of hard because I don't I don't know I don't know what's gonna happen yet I don't like want to know what's gonna happen yet so I'm just kind of going along with it as it goes but also like when you say it's the end of fairy tale it's not like it's the end of 
of any other show because their seasons are so long. So like it's not the end yet, like it's baby steps, it's baby steps. And you know, we got to, uh, a bunch of us got to be a part of the, um, like a panel when they were releasing the last manga and all of that. Plus I've already heard there's like other like probable spinoffs. I just feel like it's ending, but it's, but it's not. The main story is ending. Yeah, but like I think these characters are gonna stick around for a while. That's my guess. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any social media links people can find you at? Oh, sure, sure. Um, I am on Twitter at Jaderade, like Gatorade, J-A-D-A-R-A-D. That's a nickname that I've had for a really long time. And um, I'm sorry, y'all, that's not my Twitter. That is my Instagram. <laughs> my Instagram is Jaderade, at Jaderade. Um, my Twitter is at J-B Saxton, J-A-D-B-S-A-X-T-O-N. And then I have a Facebook, Jade Saxton Voice Actor. Well, thank you so much for your hey, time. Thanks for having me. Thank you so, thank much. You so much. And thank until so. next time, bye.